everyone, and welcome to the Heartbeat of Bartlett podcast. I am Maria McClendon, Chief Marketing Officer for First South Financial, and this is my wonderful co-host, Terry Mecklin. And we are so excited to be here with you today, and we have an awesome guest. Um, I'm really excited about our guest today because it is a very, very dear personal friend of mine, Christy Kelly with Kelly & Associates Advertising. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. We're delighted that you're here. Terry, yeah. do you want to very quickly introduce yourself? Sure. I am Terry Mecklin, uh, Director of Marketing. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> pulling on yours. I've taken your position. Director of Membership with the Chamber and Community Development. So super excited to have all of y'all here and we're excited. So Christy, open us up. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, um, I'm the president and owner of Kelly & Associates Advertising. We are a full service agency, so we do everything from graphic design work, media negotiations, website development, um, video production, animation, just anything you can think of in the world of marketing and advertising. And this wonderful podcast series is brought to you by the Bartlett Area Chamber of Commerce. And um, the reason we are all here today is because I met Christy through uh, my relationship with the Bartlett Area Chamber. Christy, can you tell us a little bit about how long um, Kelly & Associates has been associated with the Bartlett Chamber? I think it's close to 20 years, maybe about 17 or 18 years now. Um, and I served on the board at one time. Um, different committees and things like that. Uh, you and I actually launched the Bartlett Insights magazine That's years ago. That's where we got close, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, back, uh, when was that? Was that in 2011, I think? I think that sounds So in right. 2011, we decided we were going to do a community magazine when community magazines were actually dwindling in popularity. Right. We're like, let's do this. Like, we're going to do this. And I remember we worked so hard and... I mean, our previous guest talked about hustle, yes. and we hustled Absolutely. in order to pull this publication together, and I mean, ultimately came up with an award-winning publication, yes. largely due to the design and layout of Kelly and Associates. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, but that, you know, we spent so many hours working together on that project that we just became best friends. Absolutely. It's lasted a long time. <laughs> it sure has. <laughs> it sure has. So how long has Kelly and Associates been around? We have been in business since 1979. I believe we are the oldest um, female-owned agency that has not been acquired, you know, by a female. Mm -hmm. Or so I think that's a pretty neat thing. I was um, actually just a kid. My mom started it out of the house. It was not a planned thing. She worked for another agency and <laughs> made this huge presentation to a lot of builders and developers, and they gave her a standing ovation at the end. Um, they said, well, Janet, how much is that logo design going to be? And I think she said $2,500 or something. And her boss saw all the money in the room and got a little greedy and stood up and said, she means $25,000. Well, the whole room deflated. Wow. So she called, my mom called them all back when she left and told her boss she was going to do that. And they said, Janet, if you were on your own, we'd go with you right now. So we were born overnight and worked <laughs> out of our house. I was 13 answering phones and making files and... So I actually dabbled in the agency world with her as a kid a few times, but I've been there since early 1985 when I was, you know, was young in college is when I started there. Did you there. know that's what you were want, going to want to do, or did you kind of have other thoughts when you first went off? I always loved it, but I also liked the idea of um, maybe being a counselor, like a social worker mm -hmm. for children or something. So a lot of the nonprofit work we do gravitates that way. Um, that's the thing I think with the agency business, it, it can, it's so interesting because you can really gravitate towards so many different things. Right. You know, I think in my younger years, there, I did a lot of, um, retail work and things like that. I did some fashion work because I was kind of into that. Then as you get older and into other things, yeah. you can just pursue lots of different things, you know? Yeah, I think one of the things I love with almost everybody that we've had on is just their service, servant heart. Yeah. And I'm hearing that from you as well. Just the, the ability to do your business and thrive in your business but be able to give back and serve in those areas that really mean a lot to you. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite um, charity? Charity. I don't or? know that I would ever say I have a favorite, but we do a lot of work with um, Porter Leaf, mm -hmm. and that's 
you know, in the education world and serving children. We also do a lot of work with Meriden, which covers a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, they do work with foster children, but they also do work with the elderly, and mm -hmm. both of those are great organizations. But throughout my career, I've served on the board of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Memphis and done a lot of work for them mm -hmm. and just a number of different nonprofits over the I years. Love it. Yeah. I want to touch a little bit on um, the the commitment to service that all of our guests and have mm -hmm. had on this program um, across the several episodes that we've had now, I think that's a testament to our community. Because, you know, having lived somewhere else where there wasn't a sense of connectedness between one another and this really shared sense of community, mm -hmm. I think it is a testament to the Bartlett community and truly to the Bartlett Area Chamber because I think the way the membership base truly connects with one another and shares opportunities and is genuinely vested in the success and the growth of their their peers so that we can all give back to our community. I think that's one of the hallmarks of, of this wonderful place that we happen to live. So I agree. And, and you know, it's, it's unusual <laughs> to think that truly some of my very best friends in the world, lifelong friends, all originated from the chamber. From I, the and that's how y'all met, right? Absolutely. It's how we met. And it's, I mean, we've got a little girl gang. Yes. And it's, um, <laughs> And, and that's how we all met. And you know what? I do think um, <laughs> I get teary-eyed over it, so I'll try not to do that during the program. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's really remarkable that we have been able to stay connected and stay supportive of one another over so many years, so many different geographic locations mm -hmm. in our life, and right. so many different, um, you know, circumstances in our life. And, and so much has changed but that connection remains really, really strong. Absolutely. Yeah, they're Absolutely. not superficial, you know, connections that you're making. No. It's really no. hardcore, you know, at the heart connections. Yeah. And Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's yeah. awesome. We're very, I feel very fortunate. I'm so glad I got involved with the chamber when I did. I, I am, too. <laughs> not, I can't even imagine what my life would be like if you didn't. Um, so talk a little bit about, um, so, you know, it's, International Women's it's International Women's Day is coming up, but it's International Women's Month as well. Talk a little bit about your experience as a woman in business. Interesting. I think it's <laughs> changed dramatically over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many more opportunities now. There's there was years ago I didn't really wasn't very interested in becoming certified, the different, the women-owned business certifications and things like that. We named and designed uh, Pure Memphis, the Memphis bottled water, many, many years ago, and then found out we weren't able to do the marketing because they had to use the certified business. So that kind of changed my philosophy a little bit. Mm. So I typically stay certified these days because um, it does give you opportunities at government contracts and work that um, that I do value. But I always wanted to be known for the quality of our work yeah. and the results, the you know, results that we provide to our clients. But I think it's important for women to take advantage of those opportunities to get your foot in the door. But it certainly has changed. I think there are more opportunities now. Mm -hmm. um, just as far as people taking you seriously. Now, I do think in marketing and advertising, there have always been a lot of women in that mm -hmm. field. Um, so that's a, you know an advantage, I think. But some industries, I think, women are just now getting their foot in the door. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think that's completely true. And I think, um, I think that when you have role models that you can follow, I think that makes a big difference, too. And I think that you had your mom right. as, a, as a professional role model. And um, I've been so fortunate to have you know our girl gang as professional role models to kind of look up to as well. So. And all of us. I think yeah. all of us following each other. Yeah. Absolutely. So... We talked a little bit about how things have changed for women in business over the past several years. Talk a little bit about, yeah, I mean, when you say advertising and marketing, mm -hmm. uh, what that meant, we know about Mad Men, right? What that right. meant in the 1950s and what it meant in the 1970s was completely different. What it meant in the 80s and 90s was right. completely different. Talk a little bit about how the agency has had to evolve and pivot in order to stay ahead of the curve. I kind of like marketing. to stay a little bit on the cutting edge of things. Like we were one of the first two agencies to buy a Macintosh and start setting our type in-house. You know, everything went out to a typesetter before. Or color separations. I'll talk to my younger staff about that now and it's all so foreign to them, you know, mm -hmm. just, or the sheer amount of people you had to have to do the job back then before the days of computer, you know, or a huge stat machine to, you know, to send ads out. So it's changed dramatically. Um, I remember 
investing in stock photography early on and a color mm. printer where our comps just looked so good going in to see, you know, commercial clients. And so things, they constantly change. AI will be the next big thing on the mm -hmm. horizon. And it's very interesting to read about that and see how quickly that's changing things already. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of changes do you see related to AI in well, I mean, advertising and marketing? I mean, I think it'll touch everything, not just advertising and marketing, right, right. but as far as, I mean, we'll just use it now where you would do some simple Photoshop work in the past to fill in backgrounds of an image or yeah. correct things. I mean, there are things you can do so quickly now or summarize a book or content mm -hmm. or even get a first draft of copy. I mean, it's just crazy how this mm -hmm. came on the scene really last fall and it's it just exploded. already, right? Yeah. So there's no telling where that will go. Um, but yeah, I just remember years ago the, when Photoshop is challenging co color separators with the design and they're like, you've stumped us. We don't even know how to do this, you know, because of the Photoshop work. So I think always staying ahead and knowing what's coming next is so important in our industry because it changes all the time. You know, we do animations in-house and edit in-house now mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's just exciting and fun yeah. all the time. It's always something different. And, and you know, um, talking about how how quickly things change, um, I think, you know, earlier on, things would change relatively slowly. And right. now they change, like, literally in the blink of an they eye. They do. It seems like you wake up every morning and it's something brand new. Yes. Right. The age of the internet made all that possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just the exchange of information happened so quickly. And right. Like, early on, when websites came on new, we hired... Mm -hmm. um, a guy that worked for a, a company called Enterprise, a Bill Gates company, and brought him in from Milwaukee to start coding. You know, everything was hard coded then, so it was a big, heavy lift, but it kind of gave us a unique advantage to start doing a lot of websites for Service Master and um, things like that. So mm -hmm. I've always tried to, you know, even though we're small, we can be nimble because of yeah. that and kind of stay ahead of the game. So what, what size clients do you work with? all different sizes. You know, we may do project work for corporations where, you know, we're just working with an in-house marketing department. And that's a niche I've always loved. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've got nonprofits and like a nonprofit called Thistle and Bee that um, helps women that have been victims of human trafficking and substance abuse that's very small, but I love the work we do for them. So just all different, all different sizes. And that's always been the case. And mm -hmm. varied clients, I would never want to be just one niche. Yeah. You know, I think that kind of stifles your creative people. Yeah. So I like to be all over the board with the type of work we do. So. How many do you have employed? I know you're a smaller, but like you said, that keeps you nimble. And, right, right. And there's different ways. We kind of operate in a little bit of a different way now. So there are just five of us that are at the agency, mm -hmm. but I'll have writers that specialize in certain industries like banking. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. South is one of my clients. So I have a writer that's phenomenal and she can turn it so much more quickly. It doesn't cost my clients anymore, but right. she has a vast financial background. So she Love writes it. my first South copy. If I had to wait for somebody in-house to do it, we're backed up. It's going to take longer. So right. it's just a great fit. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example of how I've tried to run things a little bit differently. And some of that happened during the pandemic. You know, we just downsized some. Right. Um, so just do things a little bit differently. But it worked out better, really. I, I think one of the things that's really interesting about your team is that you've got everybody who works with you is as passionate as you are. Absolutely. Um, so Christy will respond to emails at... To, I would never send her one because I'm going to be asleep, but if, if I sent her a text or an email at 2 a.m., she would respond. I do wake up all in the night, and I always <laughs> check my email, and sometimes it's funny. I'm like, somehow my, I know that a client emailed me at 2 a.m. Yeah, so right I wake up. up, and I'm like, I just had the sixth sense that a client emailed. Um, we did the Join the Best in Blue campaign for the Memphis Police Department a few years ago, and it was inevitable. I would wake up at some odd time in the middle of the night, and I had just received an email from them. I think they just worked around the clock all the yeah. time. But um, <laughs> and they have a good thing you did, too. Yeah. <laughs> you so, were working when they were working. Absolutely. Absolutely. So 20 years with the Bartlett Area Chamber. Talk a little bit about that. Why, what was your impetus to join the chamber, and what kind of opportunities has it opened up for you? I actually went to a business after hours, part um, cocktail hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was just a fluke. I just went with a friend and got involved and just fell in love with the people and got heavily involved pretty quickly. Yeah. And it's uh, opened all kinds of doors for me. Um, as far as I served on the board there for a few years, um, met Craig Israel at First South mm -hmm. Financial and did, did some project work for him and then um, was asked to serve on his board. And I've been on that board for many, many years now and actually assist, you know, help you with the marketing. Yeah. So that's great fun. Um, 
did work for the chamber itself. I do work for the city of Bartlett, which um, has been great. You know, redesigned their logo years ago, do lots of different project work for them. Um, so really, it, it, it made me fall in love with the city of Bartlett to yeah. the extent that I sold my house in Lakeland and oh, moved wow. to Bartlett, which, yeah. you know. Um, so I'm just really vested in that community now. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, going back to the, the nature of the people in the community, mm -hmm. it makes it so easy to fall in love with everyone there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it makes total sense. And, and not to mention, um, Debbie Jeleno is Absolutely. part of our girl gang and with the yes. city of Bartlett. Yes. I yes. love how y'all are still going to business after hours and closing it down. <laughs> <laughs> group of, of ladies was the last one out at this last one, which it wasn't amazing. It was, it was yeah, a fun it was a great event. event. Yeah. But well, they nice actually had can... to move the night because it was landing on my first South financial board night oh, for wow. several years. And I was like, I can't go to business after hours. I'll oh, have it no. on the wrong night. You're going to have to move it. So <laughs> finally that happened. We accomplished that. Yeah. So I love it. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, um, it, thinking back on when you were, you know, 14 and at your mom's kitchen table, mm -hmm. um, just getting started in the marketing and advertising world, what advice would you give yourself today if you if you had the wealth of knowledge and experience that you have today? Well, I don't know that I would have much advice for the 14-year-old other than <laughs> just have a good time and don't take things too seriously. But I think... Does the 14-year-old need that advice? Um, <laughs> it depends on the um, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. But I think as a young person in business, I think you really should follow your passion, you know, mm -hmm. just follow your bliss. Um, cause don't worry too much about money. I, I see so many people get pushed in certain directions mm -hmm. with careers and I think you really need to follow what makes you happy. Yeah. And I've kind of done that with the type of clients that I handle, um, the people I work with. I just think that's so important. You spend so much of, you, of your day working mm -hmm. and you need to do something you're in love with. I think that is really, really good advice because, um, you know, I have kids that are in college and the advice that we give them regularly is to do what they're interested in yeah. because right. the last thing you want to do is to spend, you know, 10 or 20 years down a career path mm -hmm. and, realize and then realize not. this is, I wish I'd done something different. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you never had that feeling. This is always what you wanted to do. I always loved it from the beginning. Absolutely loved it. But like I said, I did, I, when I was younger, I thought I wanted to be a counselor, a yeah. social worker, but I was able to fulfill that passion mm -hmm. through, through the work I did. Mm -hmm. No, is that what you ended up going to college then for, is for the marketing? Or? I did. I did. Okay. I majored in journalism and I minored in sociology. Very good. So, okay. But I think the two kind of go hand in they hand. Do. Too. So they do. It worked out. <laughs> so working with the diverse clients that you have over the years, I bet you have some fun stories. Um, yeah. I was wow. thinking that too. I was wow. like, that's what we always want to hear is the yeah. good fun stories. Oh, wow. Well, there was a shoot we did one time where there was a company here in Memphis called Macaulay's, and they made a carpet powder in different, like, home fragrances. Mm -hmm. And the campaign was the competitors, like Glade, were a little bit piggy with their prices, and they didn't use as much fragrance. So we had to go <laughs> scout pigs. We had to go oh, to no, pig farms <laughs> and, and scout pigs. So we were in this very nice conference room. Oh, I was no. pregnant. I was pregnant during the shoot and um, pigs were sitting at this beautiful conference table. One pig had its own rooster. We find, So we thought we might have to raise these pigs oh, to be gosh. trained, but we found some pet pigs that could do that. So we had little outfits made for them, little suits. We had a board pig painted that was hung on the conference room wall. How Crazy fun. shoot. But the one pig couldn't perform without its pet rooster. So it's in there. So the whole, the whole shoot, the whole conference room is just wild and crazy. The rooster gets loose. That, we ended up using that in the shot. But it's just, that was probably my craziest uh, television shoot ever. Do you still sure. have that footage? Somewhere, yeah. I, I, you need yeah. to share I that with us. I would love yeah. to see the yeah. pig shoot. I think we got it transferred because this was in the days. I think it was shot on film, but, you know, it would be transferred down to a video yeah. format. But I think I do have that transferred. That would be fun. That's so. That's hilarious. I've never heard that story. <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, I don't know what made me think of that, but, yeah, the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> so what's on the horizon for you? Like what, what um, you, you've often told me that, this business is so deeply ingrained in your blood that um, that you don't foresee 
not working anytime soon. No. But like, talk no. a little bit about what you see happening over the next few years, and, and what's what's next for you, and what's next for Kelly and Associates. Well, I probably won't ever completely retire. You know, I'll stay involved to some extent. My vice president is one of my greatest sources of pride, Kim Strickland, and you know, I've. I'm not accustomed to two sides of somebody's brain working at this high capacity, <laughs> but she, I hired her probably, gosh, maybe 17, 18 years ago, close to 20 years ago as a graphic designer, and she's so phenomenally talented, but her mind, the business side of her mind works as well. Oh, so good. she's learned a little bit of everything. You know, she's gotten into the business and she's even learning the media side of it. So mm -hmm. she will inherit that business when something happens to me someday down the road. Um, but she's truly like a partner. And so she'll keep it going and run it as long as she wants to and do great things. We're very like-minded as far as nonprofits and the things we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, so Kelly Associates will continue on after um, for a long, long for a time. long, long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we do want to give Kelly and Associates um, as much of a plug as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about the different services that you would provide to different types of businesses, and um, if those businesses want to reach out to you, what what do they need to do to contact sure, you? Sure, sure. So anything from, I think one of my favorite things to do, and I always say this, I say this about everything I'm, I do at the agency, but I love to negotiate media and get the word out. So there's different ways to reach people now as far as based on your interests and behavior. So if somebody's looking for a roof, I can find them on television based on their past you know, searches mm -hmm. and things like that. So if you're needing to advertise and get the word out there, we can help you with digital or television advertising, radio, any type of media like that. Social media, we can help with you with that presence as well. Um, production, video, any kind of design work, animation, just anything you think of in that realm. And just, I mean, any type of business needs some type of type of marketing presence. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So regardless of the industry or the size or if it's project work or nonprofit, yeah. We love to talk to you. And our website's probably the best way to, to kind of check out some of our work and contact us. And that's Kelly, K E L L E Y A D V dot com. Awesome. Very good. Well, we have really enjoyed this. Yes. And um, we're so thankful for you to have come and so thankful for First South for sponsoring these podcasts, The Heartbeat. Uh, well, before we wrap yes, up, I want to actually, else? well, I, um, so a shameless plug for First South as well. Um, so Christy actually has been a longtime member of First South Absolutely. Financial as well. Yeah. So can you talk about that relationship a little bit? Oh my gosh. They're just, <laughs> they're so incredible to deal with. I mean, so personable in every way. I just... Um, my financial advisor actually suggested I do this as opposed to pulling money out of investments. I just built an outdoor living area and a pool. And, you know, for a financial advisor that's not at First South to say, you really need to take advantage of this HELOC loan mm -hmm. and use that money out of your house to, um, to fund that. So I, I recently did have that loan with them now. I have numerous different accounts there. And I mean, just it's just such a personable experience yeah. doing business with our yeah, We staff. do our best to take care of our, our members. We want to make sure we take really good care of them. So, Yeah, I can't say enough nice things about it. I recommend the first out to everybody. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, sorry to interrupt you. No, Mary. no. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, is there anything else you guys can think of to chat about before we – I know we're getting close to the – in time, and so I don't the definitely time don't always, miss it. It the, goes so fast. The time goes so fast when you're having fun. It does. Thank you all for having me today. Christy, it's absolutely a pleasure. You're, su you're such a thank shining you. star. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to the Heartbeat of Bartlett podcast. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that, that bell. Hit, yep, hit that bell. <laughs> ring a ding ding. Thank you guys. We'll see you on the next podcast. Bye. Oh, wait, and we've got to oh. thank V2 Media. V2 thank you Media so much. that makes Always. this podcast possible. Without V2 Media, we wouldn't be coming live at you. So <laughs> thank you, V2 Media. Thank you.